grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. A very warm welcome to our Lenten service. We begin with the hymn number 370. Stand up and bless the Lord. Oh. 
call upon him, and I will hear him. With long life will I satisfy him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
The second one, he prays that they'll be able to live out the gospel in a life of love. And thirdly, he prays for their ultimate safety on the day of judgment, that they will be blameless before the Lord Jesus when he returns in glory. And it's, a, it's a wonderful, encompassing prayer. It looks to a specific need. It looks to everything in the present moment, but also forward to future glory. But in the middle of it all is a single line which has really captivated my mind. And it's, caught, it's the one which caught my attention as I was reading through this letter. Paul prays, may he strengthen your hearts in holiness. May he strengthen your hearts in holiness. It's, it's beautiful, it's poetic, but it's so much more. Uh, it really is an extraordinarily profound prayer. And I think the profound bit is what Paul doesn't pray. He's not praying about their deeds or their actions, their behaviour. He's not praying about their belief and their doctrine. Uh, so it, it, it's not actions, it's not intellectual. It's focusing on their heart. That's where his prayer starts. May your hearts be strengthened. And that's really important and really special. Because the heart is a seat of emotion. All our emotions flow from the heart. And the heart is also the organ that gives us life, that allows life to exist in our body. Your biology tells us the heart pumps through veins and arteries and valves and all sorts of stuff. The heart is what keeps us alive. It gives us life, but it's also the, the emotional center of the body and the soul. So Paul is not focusing firstly on physical needs, He's not focusing on the body and well-being or you know, the practical material needs of life. He's not focusing on the mind, on the intellectual knowledge of God, belief, doctrine, theology. He zones in and prays for the heart. Because he knows that if the heart is right, then everything else will be okay. Everything else flows from that. If the heart is right, we're alive. Physically, if the heart is strong, our emotions are strong. So he prays that God will strengthen our hearts. It just struck me as an extraordinary, wonderful because you know so much of Christianity, or so, so much of what we present as Christianity today, focuses on the mind, or focuses on actions and deeds and behaviour. We're so concerned with people having the right understanding and belief. We drum catechisms and creeds into, into each other. We teach doctrine and theology, and the Christians fall out over theology more than anything else. They fall out over small details which really don't matter in the big scheme of things. Or we worry about people's actions and behaviours, and we chastise them for so many things. Paul doesn't focus on one or the other. He, he cuts through it all and goes straight to the heart. And you know, when you look at the teaching of Jesus, that's what Jesus does. Jesus never criticizes sin. He criticizes the motives that cause sin. You know, and that's why he says, uh, when he's talking about judgment, to be careful. Let him without sin cast the first stone. See, it's not the action, it's the heart that causes the action for the problem is. And so Jesus focuses on getting the heart right, and so does Paul. Paul prays for a strong heart. And we're thinking last week in that passage of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus and Paul are very much in tune here. It's the heart that allows us to love God and to love our neighbour. It's the heart, the, the right heart, that leads to a life of Christian service and devotion and that leads us to glory in the world to come. When the Lord Jesus returns in glory, we're going to be judged. But we're not going to be judged on our actions, on our deeds, 
as much as our motives. Jesus isn't going to say, well, what did you give of your plenty to charity? How much time did you spend studying the scriptures and in prayer? It will all start in, in the heart. And whatever mistakes we make, are our motives pure? Whatever we got wrong, did we do it because we love God and love our neighbor? See, if the heart is lacking, we're in trouble. If the heart's right, we still be perfect, we won't get it all right. But everything else does cascade down a bit like a waterfall. And that's why Paul prays fervently and earnestly that their hearts will be strengthened in holiness. And we'll, we'll think a little bit more next week about what holiness is. But tonight, we're simply focusing on that single word, the heart, that your heart may be strengthened. And that's my prayer tonight for each one of you and for everyone in our congregation, that all of our hearts will be strengthened in holiness that we may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Because one day, maybe one day soon, Jesus will come or come. And on that day, all that will matter is, is your heart ready? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Turn to our hymns for our next hymn, number 639. O thou who camest from above to kindle a flame of sacred love on the mean altar of my heart.
Madonna. Preserve us, O Lord, by the way, and guard us from the sea, and the way we may watch with Christ, and the sleep we may rest in peace.
Let us pray. O Lord, who for our sake did fast forty days and forty nights, give us grace to use such abstinence that our flesh, being subdued to the Spirit, we may ever obey thy bodily motions in righteousness and true holiness, to thy honor and glory, who live us in the midst of the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, word without end. Almighty and everlasting God, who hit us not only by the need, and dost forgive the sins of all men that are it, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of peace and justice. <coughs> We pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and for the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Light in our darkness, we seek you, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, bless and preserve us this night and forevermore. The hymn number 634, Love Divine, All Loves Except, Joy of Heaven to Earth.